Hey guys, we're Blowing Way Back. I'm Aaron. I'm Melanie. And we are back with the final episode of Supergirl for the season. Oh, it's going to be a doozy. Last episode, we had uh, Kara meeting uh, Red Daughter and fighting. Yes. Um, and Red Daughter dead in Lex's arms. And Kara dead on the ground. Soaking in the sun. Saved by grass. <laughs> and it wasn't even aired on 420. Um, and then we have Brainy. Being kind of bad. Um, yeah, I don't Being know what's going to happen Being indifferent, maybe? <clears throat> he sent John and uh, Nia to somewhere. The so other that she side. can project to him where they are and he can save them. Which, who knows if she'll effectively be able to do that. So that's scary. <laughs> um, we had Lillian working with Lena. Yes, to try to help James. James says he still needs the powers. We still have powers with uh, Lockwood. Mm -hmm. um, Lex is, has Red Daughter. He looks to be the hero because Kaznia attacked, which was kind of weird because they showed it off screen. They didn't really show no, us No, so they need um, to show us more. I'm mad. And um, Alex remembers Car now, so yeah. we had that. We also had a poll from last episode, which was the, you know, it's very likely to be the last poll that we're going to have for Supergirl until the next time. All right, so the question was, do you believe that we are done with Red Daughter? No, right, no. 29% said yes, while 70% said no. No. Yes, because I like her. Melissa's doing such a great job playing both characters, I think. Like, with her accent and everything. And portrayal, she's not even doing this with her. <laughs> well, Dip says, I think she's just beaten up, and they are just lying about her being dead. Okay. Well, Kevin says, I don't think Lex is leaving anything to chance. She is dead. That's very Lex. Um, while Laura agrees that Lex does not want to have a chance that Red Daughter could turn on him. Joel says, no. The only way I can think she's dead is if there's a flashback where she learns of Lex's deception and tries to stop him. Oh, hmm, that's clever. That's thinking outside the box. Well, Thomas says, tragically, I think she is dead. From the beginning, Lex was manipulating her for his own ends and was always going to betray her. It shows just how twisted Lex truly is, and with him being this close to success, he wouldn't leave something like that to chance. Oh, that's so true. So where's more of the no's? We're not done with her yet. <laughs> Everyone you've read is like... Sarah says, I think there's a redemption waiting for her, and if this would be her ending, it would have been pretty rushed. Thank you! Uh, flashback says, building up the whole season and even giving her a good backstory just to write her off with a shot shot off television nah or a shot on the television mm -hmm. like off screen for us but on television in the show oh gotcha mm -hmm. uh nah she ain't dead yet plus she needs to be reunited with mikhail oh the little boy that yes. didn't die right because otis still lived yes because old otis had a heart it may have been green but he still had a heart all right well there you go maybe she will be reunited with the little boy that she cared about so much um maybe she is dead we don't know but we will find out this time mr luther a grateful nation thanks you it wasn't a green explosion though it was a red explosion 24 hours earlier so we're gonna see what she okay. did after. On her side? Maybe. Oh man. We haven't seen him in so long. He looks so good, but I hate him so much. <laughs> Whoa! Alien energy transfer complete. Only one way to find out. Um excuse me, uh, stand very still. Are you serious? So while they were fighting, Kazni was attacking. Jeez. Oh! Lex Luthor comes in to save the day. Oh my gosh. What is the meaning of this? Oh my gosh! That's quite a shot, though. I was supposed to lead the attack. No, Kazni had you did exactly what you were meant. That's what you said now. Krasnaya Dutch. Oh. Not dead. Okay. Not dead. That's surprising. I, you. I have bigger plans for you. 
We still have more plans. Putting her in a thing to use her powers, maybe. In light of this new evidence, I have pardoned Mr. Luther. I'm appointing him the new secretary <laughs> of alien affairs. Hey. Okay. No, no, no. Where about Lockwood? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I don't see any anymore. It's good. No. Ah, jeez. <laughs> ah, ah. Told you to wait. Oh, oh. I did not know he could do that. What the? They were holograms? Oh, was it Eve? It's Eve. The copy's of Eve. Oh, and the mom? Oh. As another world leader once said, I don't see why men shouldn't be as cruel as nature. Try not to quote Hitler in public, dear. <laughs> It'll hurt the brand. You killed Superman's cousin, took over the country. Ah, I was hoping you'd bring up the man of yesterday. She poisoned it, the didn't she? The first batch of depleted aliens will charge the satellite weapon that will turn Argo into a blazing inferno and Superman into, well, ash. He's gonna destroy Argo too? Yeah. You're not buying this mother. Of course not. Okay. I've already poisoned his tea. See? <laughs> That's why she kept staring at his mouth long enough to take a sip. He'd be dead by now. My powers are coming back. Astro project are braining the others. <sighs> no pressure or anything. It works. But if all the aliens get their powers back. Well. They needed a human hero, and I fulfill that need. Nothing will ever change George? their minds. Yeah. Facts are irrelevant. Divide and betray America. Spin. I am the leader of this nation now. Hmm. And nothing can stop me. Except for Kara Dampers. Oops. Fighting the ideal, right? Mm-hmm. We'll help Sean and Dreamer. Supercharged friends came here to deal with Luther. Uh, what? Why can't they work together? Jeez. There goes your redemption arc, Darren. Oh. Zabby, 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 zabby. I'm so happy that Alex can take on these super powered friends. <laughs> I love John so much. I love him so much. <laughs> no one leaves. Uh oh, suiting up. Do you think so Lockwood and Supergirl have to fight him together? Oh, oh man, I hope so. That'd be so cool. Don't get any ideas. We need to get the hair now out of bed now. They have the hair now extractors. There's one for each of them. Oh no. How did you do it? How do you think I did it? I'm Supergirl. Just like your cousin. Kryptonite? So did I. The suit! Oh. Uh, Alex's suit, right? Lena, Lena made, made it. your sister for this. <laughs> boxes. Yay, Brainy's coming back! Boxes. The boxes. And subroutines and... Did it just reboot? Bring these back? No. And I love you. Oh, did it work? What happened? System overload. Okay. Run! You gotta blow up. Ooh, James versus Lockwood. Jeez. Oh, and Lex versus Kara. Dang, the song. Look at this song. <laughs> I know, right? Good, I guess. Oh! I should check the hair now from both of them then. Oh! <laughs> she can go help Supergirl? Maybe. Or die. No. And she's gonna jump in front of it. Yep, yep. Absorbing into her. Oh. Jeez. 
set the plasma ray or whatever. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Jeez. Uh oh, breaking off. I'd rather die. All right. So be it. Ah, that makes more go. sense. Okay. okay. Just checking the hair now. Uh, Who is that? The mom? No more superpowers for you. Lena? Lena. We both know. No matter how much you despise me, you're not ruthless enough to pull that trigger. Oh! The joke's on you. It's always been on you. Don't tell her. No, Don't tell her. No. Don't tell her. Your friends have been lying to you every last one. Dang it, I didn't know how to come back. It's a powerful thing, is it? It's been standing right in front of you all this time. The cabinet invoked the 25th Amendment to remove Baker from Let's office. Let's talk about power of the press. Did he lose an eye? Says my injured friend. Vice President Pacino has lifted martial law and reinstated the Alien Amnesty Act until such time as a full vote can be held in Congress. Interim Another Secretary of Alien I Affairs. I want to send a nice. message to Supergirl, wherever she may be. Yay, Haley! For a moment, this country doubted you. I haven't felt like this in a long time. And I just felt like I had to... You're not. We see nothing. <laughs> uh, I'm glad Brainy's back. Me too. She gets it. <laughs> Don't tell people that. <laughs> yes. Hey. Yeah. Hi. Lena. Hey, James will be here soon, and then the whole family will be together. Huzzah! Where have you been? I didn't know what to bring, so I bought red and white. Yes. Nice. Well, now that you're here, we can. I can't keep it from her anymore. <laughs> Lena's been through hell. You know, we finally got to a place where it sort of feels a little normal again, so... Shut up, Alex! You know, maybe just... Turning against each other has only led to more division... Yeah. George! ...more hate and more violence. There must be a better way. Eve? Yeah, Looks like you're packed, Lenny. Leviathan is everywhere. Uh. Leviathan is everyone. And Leviathan is coming. What's this? Terminator? show up at the end or something crisis related at least showing up yes you know and monitor and arrow and we had the the newspaper and stuff in flash so so i was expecting it and well Supergirl. see even still with me and eric we were talking like is there something that's going to happen here or because it's another universe will it not happen over here and it's going to happen on this earth and this is the earth that's important or what's going to happen but but she was still involved in that first crossover so that's why well kind of so that's why i was expecting something yeah Something but, about this next crisis coming up, but not like this. <laughs> Who was that? I mean, I'm assuming it's John Jones's brother. Although it could have been a wording of like, you know, brother as in more of like Martian, a, uh, yeah, Martian, yeah, like yeah. a brotherhood kind of thing rather than like a blood brother kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's why. I was so it could be that way as well. But no, like no, there's just another green Martian. Hunting our our green Martian. 
I don't know if that's like gonna be a villain thing. If it's like it came through one of the little portal things that the monitor made, maybe. I don't I don't know if that's I don't know. I'm I'm really curious on where they're going with Crisis, how all of it's gonna come together, you know, planning on where their each season has ended to what we're gonna be having like leading up to it. Because I'm very I'm, yeah. I thought Arrow's season may be a lot of like building up the crisis. Yeah. Well other uh, shows are having their own things that are going on, kind of. Mm-hmm. But I can see Arrow helping build up that crisis too. With yeah. What's going on? Not uh, Arrow. Uh, Flash. Oh. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I don't know. With having like Monitor show up here, is he going to be a bigger part of every season? Is this crisis thing going to be really affecting everything? And that's the big <laughs> proponent of all. I don't know. All the shows is first ten episodes. Because if it is, this Supergirl is jam packed with bad guys right now like people opposing supergirl like with the the leviathans the whoever this green martian is and then we're gonna have lena and whatever the crap happens to lex Mm. like there's gonna be so much going on this next season i think too like crisis what was uh, what was monitor doing with um with lex at the end and i'm also surprised they just left the the body was just left there well it's not lena lena wasn't gonna haul it out if anything she would have blown it up with him in there yeah, I guess. I mean, I would have figured he would have been found at some point or something, but... Hmm. I don't know. This next season... I mean, this season was amazing. I loved this season. But next season has so much potential to be just as good or even better. <laughs> well, the thing that they've that they've done in this season, too, is all of the... My favorite thing about this whole, whole season has been the idea of fighting that, fighting ideas, fighting ideals, fighting mm-hmm. what people believe in. It's not about having some big, strong evil that, you know, reign, that we have to somehow try to find a way to defeat, or Daxamites, which are strong people invading Earth that we need to fight, or Kryptonians that are strong people that we're trying to fight. It was about fighting the ideas and beliefs behind people and, you know, what is right and what is wrong, and can we work together, which... Like George talks about there at the end, you know, like about. I love that. You know, and, and it's neat having this other, this young Lockwood who watched this. It tore apart his family. You know, he's lost everything. He's lost, you know, his, he lost his grandfather. He lost his mom. His dad's in jail, but he still believes that we come together and working together is the right answer. And it's not I'm blaming these people for what I've lost. It's that we need to come together and we need to be a family. You know, right. everybody. So I. I like, you know, the whole ideals and like having Ben Lockwood who is taking these things and his losses he's equating to the alien menace, you know? He's, you see him slowly take this dark path, whereas you have the son who slowly, you know, is following kind of a similar path and what he loses, but mm-hmm. th- doesn't go the same route, you know? Because so, the son was even alive whenever the grandfather died. Yeah. So his son was there and witnessed Everything. Yeah, and he was sad about that and everything. So. And he's still yeah. on the so side I, of equality and love that, and peace. That's why I love the idea of like battling beliefs and ideals because it's it's you know each person is different and stuff. And how do you get someone else to change a belief that they have when you know it's they're, they're, they believe this and it's mm-hmm. maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe it is a good idea. But and I loved how they countered the battling the love and ideals with. Kara saving the day there, writing that huge article. It was Kara Danvers that brought the country yeah. back together. It wasn't Supergirl, Kara. It was destroying um, what Lex Luthor stood for, mm-hmm. you know, a symbol. And then once you destroyed that symbol, then taking out Lex, you know, the, he still had a, a menacing threat of this suit with these shooty wrist guard things. Well, but, yeah. Um, but no, like, yeah, it was... It was, I think it was, this whole season was done fairly well. You have people that had no powers, gaining powers and stuff. Um, maybe Lockwood's ending in the last little bit wasn't quite what I was wanting because like his villain was Lex Luthor at that point, but then he showed up and he still hated aliens, so then he started to fight Supergirl, but yeah. then he just ended up fighting two humans. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it was okay. It could have been maybe a little better, but... The thing I do like is that you didn't, we didn't kill him. And yeah, the, the he's in I, jail. The thing I typically like, especially when they're doing the TV show things, and you're going to be able to have, you know, many different episodes telling a different story each episode, overarching. You know, it, it's much more comic booky 
than it is the movies because you have multiple shows, you know, yeah. multiple okay. issues that can be telling an overarching story. So killing off your villains and stuff every time isn't always the best idea. You know, if, you, if you're making movies, you're going to make one every couple years. Mm -hmm. You want to tell a new villain story. You want to tell new stuff. You know, you don't have the con. But this one, you're each year you're telling 20 stories. Yep. Keeping those villains reoccurring and bringing them back every once in a while. Or don't, don't even bring them back, but, you know, maybe George is a big character next season. And he has to go and talk to his dad. Or Kara has to go and talk to the dad. You know, talk to Ben Bring Sam Whitworth back for you next know, season. Just, just a special guest for an episode or something, yeah. you know? Like, just to have that. Like, I, one of my big things was always, like, you know, you can't have Spider-Man's Sinister Six if at the end of every Spider-Man movie you kill off the villain. Yeah. If you kill off Doc Ock and then you kill off, you know, Vulture or whatever, like, you're not going to be able to get that. So... In the TV show series, I think it's, it's awesome. I think it's easier to do that because well, we got a lot of stories to tell. Let's not kill them off. Let's get them in jail. Which Lockwood they removed the power, mm -hmm. but you know, is there still a threat there? Could he still be a menace in some way, or you know, or maybe help? Who knows? Yeah, that was one thing I was kind of hoping was that maybe there'd be like, a, excuse me, maybe there'd be like a uh, a moment of like Kara and Lockwood versus Lex and Red Daughter. You know, yeah. both having the hair now, both being Kryptonians, kind of like that's who they're using because he sees Lex now as a as a bigger evil than Supergirl, so he has to actually pair with what he's been hating this entire time to try to take down Lex Luthor, and then she can use him to help buy time for Lex because she's busy fighting a red daughter, so. And I was rooting for you. I was hoping that you would be right with that theory, but they did not go that way. They didn't, but what they did do was... Pretty good. The only thing I would have liked to have seen was maybe a little bit more of a... I mean, they went with, like, a redemption for Red Daughter. But I would have liked a little bit more of a, you know, where'd that little boy go? Yeah. Or, I, I don't know, just oh, something I mean, more there. I mean, the Red Daughter doesn't even know that he's alive. I know. So, she had no hope to see him again. I know. But, like, that could have been... Seeing him alive could have been a turning point for... Instead, mm -hmm. she landed, found out that she'd been betrayed by Lex Luthor, yeah. and then got shot. And as soon as that happened, she got locked up, got unlocked up, and went and saved Supergirl and died. Yeah. Like, I feel like there could have been maybe just a little more with her, but at, at the same time, I don't feel like it was terrible. Um, and then, I forget exactly why she got split and created to begin with, but then she got like absorbed back into Supergirl. Um, the end of last season, right? What happened in the season finale? Like, what was the big villain? She was fighting Rain. And so, then, okay. something to do with that, and I don't remember. A I don't remember exactly A piece of what. her landed in the desert, right? Like a meteor? I mean, she showed up in Cosnia, is what happened. Okay. I don't, rem I don't remember if that's what happened. I just remember the very last scene was, you know, Kara walking in the snow in Russia. What's this? So. Hmm. Um, but uh, as far as the wrap-up of everything, um, Brainy. I, I love the Brainy talking. Like, I love the way he talked with his, like, bad Brainy. He was amazing. That actor, oh my gosh, he is spectacular. With him being the indifferent brainy, I, I'd call it, because he's not really bad. He's just doing, you know, he doesn't care about anything. He's just getting the job done. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of indifferent. But his walk, the way that he would turn his head, then turn his body, it was, like, so robotic. And, like, just his strut. <laughs> like, everything about him just was so different. And then his performance of... Boxes, boxes, put them back in boxes. Like, you know, that and just seeing the change on his face to tears and just seeing that his friends are holding here and just trying to save the world, mm -hmm. to save Argo, and just, like, coming back. I was just so surprised. I was so proud of that actor. I was like, oh, my gosh, you are the best. He brought me to tears. <laughs> and just coming back and then going from you are not going to make it to... You guys can do this. You guys got this. You guys got this. And cheering them on and just rooting for them. And 
boom, they got it. So I was happy. <laughs> yeah. That performance was amazing. Which I also really loved uh, John's, like his little like moment of being like, I ran away from my planet and family and you know people dying. I'm not gonna do that again. Let kill me just die. And then and turn back at the end. That guy's there to kill him because that happened. Well, but we anyway. don't know why he's there really, right? <laughs> What was the line he said? I will find you, John Jones, or something like that? Well, it was Monitor that told him you, he let millions of you die. You've been trapped for too long. A phantom to your people. Now it is time to avenge yourselves against the brother who wronged you. Will you help me? So now you must avenge yourself against a brother that wronged you. So it's nothing about the people necessarily. I but guess that's maybe, what I was assuming. Maybe what it could have been. I mean, I don't know. A phantom to your people. Maybe it's kind of a, um, kind of like a he was not for the Martians. He wanted to do something more drastic, and John turned him in. And they casted him out or something like that. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what it could be. Like I kind of think about like Zod and. Uh, the Kryptonians and stuff, mm -hmm. and he wanted to have a more drastic approach and what he was, what his plans were. Yeah. And then they cast him into the Phantom Zone, right? Right. Where he was just trapped forever. So like maybe it could have been kind of something like that, but in a Martian standpoint rather than a Kryptonian standpoint. Mm-hmm. Oops. But I don't know. I don't know anything about like as far as the comics go and John Jones and you know any of that kind of stuff. Like I don't really know much of it so yeah my knowledge it, is young justice and yeah a lot like, of it's the a little animated, bit of justice league the and, animated dc shows and stuff yeah. is where i've gathered any of mine really and stuff so and i haven't even seen like all of that you know i haven't seen batman animated series and the superman animated mm -hmm. series i've seen some of the justice league i've seen young justice um a couple of like the dc movies and stuff like that you know but yeah so uh like where this will go i'm not 100 percent sure but it's also neat like I'm always sitting there watching and being like, okay, well, Leviathan, hmm, is that something I I should know? Is that something from a comic book? Is that something that they're bringing in that's new? So, but it's also neat to not have expectations because sometimes mm -hmm. when people have, you know, uh, the Venom movie, having expectations of what Venom is makes that movie less. If you go into it not knowing what Venom is, it's not too bad of a standalone movie if it wasn't, like, oh, it's Venom, a symbiote, made from Spider-Man kind of thing, you know? Like, this one's like, oh, it's a weird alien creature, and the movie kind of works, and it's fun. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. um, I liked uh, Haley. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, if anyone got a redemption, that was her. Like, we go from her. I hated her. <laughs> I hated well, her before. At the beginning, she came in, she was trying to out Kara and her identity. So, in, in a way, that came back around. The whole identity crisis is what is making our next villain. But anyway, we go through that, and then now she's siding with Supergirl. Because she wanted to make Supergirl her puppet. Like, if I know her identity, then I know how to control her. And her eyeball just turned off. And it's back on. But no, I loved Haley. I was so proud. Another actor I was so proud of. <laughs> Not so much for performance, but storyline was awesome. Yeah, no, I, I've uh, her arc has been to me, I think, fairly enjoyable. Of like when she first came in, and she's a villain, and she was, you know, a cause. Not a villain, but she was an antagonist to our protagonist. Yeah. She was, you know, the cause of why Alex had to lose her memories and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then as it goes, it's like that there's better understanding between, you know, this person who follows the rules and understands regulations and everything to, well, this president's corrupt, you know, and starting to make her own decisions rather than just following orders blindly. So, I like that. Yeah. I wonder who will be the president uh, next time, um, considering that we lost, um, I think they called her Marston, Marsden, the Wonder Woman. Yeah. Right? And then we had this guy who was a, a puppet. puppet of Lex and stuff. So um, right now we have the interim, uh, what is it, Alien Affairs, right? Department of Alien Affairs 
is Haley, is Haley right now. So so does that make Alex the DEO DEO? Lead again? Yeah. I mean, she should have just stayed that. I think you know. But are they going to bring someone else in? Because are they going to be taking Alex another direction? They've talked about her and a child and kind of a life that she can't do with the DEO, maybe. So well, that's a life that she cannot do alone with the with the DEO. Because she was looking at options of how to adopt all by herself. Yeah. Not with another. And right now we have the chance of her having a kid with someone at home to watch. Well, I think you're... I think it's jumping. If if it goes that direction. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, like, she's looking at adopting a kid now or soon, mm-hmm. apparently. So, because we have uh, James's sister, which I guess is okay. I said before, I'm like, okay, they brought someone in they're just gonna go that way but they are gonna go that way but we'll, we'll see what they do with that I meant you should it's probably gonna be a more um, serious relationship more reoccurring character in the next season so but I wouldn't say like oh well now that she's there they can have a kid together it's like well that's still I imagine her doing this she is okay with having a kid given that half their time together that we've seen has been them trying to get a kid and the other half was taking care of James, worrying about him. Right. So, and then, uh, yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. We'll see where Alex goes with all that. The next thing that I was, I'm curious about is Lena and how that's going to go with her. So, I was happy that she was the one that got to put the end to to Lex. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't... Uh, no, but, because it sends her down more of a dark path rather than, like, arresting him and stuff. But, I mean, I get her point of, like, the world's not safe while you're in it. Mm-hmm. But... And we already tried prison. We already tried ways to contain you. Nothing's working. Would you have liked Supergirl to have killed him? Um, like, there in the suit right there, that dust at the end, where it just felt, like, anticlimactic. <laughs> like, the suit, boom, blew up. Nothing. Like... Maybe if there was a dead Lex on the ground. No, but... I don't mean like. I mean, would you have, would you have liked it if Supergirl would have been like, the world's not safe if you're in it, and just like laser eyed him into the into death. No. That's why I was kind of upset about her. Well, she tried to save him, but then he ended up dying, and yeah. she's one very big about not killing her enemies. Yeah, that's why I'm like worried about Lena and stuff like that, and what they're doing with like, oh well, Lena had no problem shooting him. And then now she knows the secret of Supergirl and stuff, and where is that going to go with her? Yeah. I know. Like, that had me. I was bawling. I'm like, no, Lex. No, Lex. Please don't. Ugh. Well, whenever we had the plane thing and all that happening, I'm like, this is going to be something that comes back this season. Oh, yeah. That they're building, too. It's not going to be Or she's like, I'm not going to trust anyone again. Like, Eve had me, like... I was friends with her. I helped her, and she deceived me. Yeah. I'm never going to trust anyone again if they ever do that to me. (laughs) I would hope that it'd be a different route because of, you know, okay, we had Kara and Supergirl, and you guys work together, and she's saved you there when you were being attacked in your place, and she obviously must have helped you in Cosnia, and she stopped Lex Luthor from doing this stuff as Mm -hmm. Kara and as Supergirl. Like, obviously... She's a good person, but she's not sure if she should have told you or not because you were a Luther. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I feel like there's some different things to look at. But then they keep toying with Kara being like, oh, I should tell her. Or maybe I shouldn't yeah, even tell her. Even there at the end. And Alex is like, no, right now's not the time. I mean, if she didn't know, then a lot of stuff just happened. I mean, Alex isn't necessarily wrong. Right. But being a an audience person knowing what's going on and what's actually, like, in Lena's mind. Mm-hmm. I still think she should have told her on the plane. Like, whenever it was going down and yeah. Lena was so worried about her best friend, Kara, getting hurt. Alrighty. Anything else that you have? Or do you want to go over to Q&As and talk about stuff there? Just some quotes I really enjoyed. I love Lex going, you and your cousin with your glossy capes and your perfect hair. <laughs> Because he's bald. It just made me laugh so hard. Mm-hmm. I like the little comedic relief. And then um, I really liked what drove Kara slash Supergirl in this episode. The whole, I will not let fear win. And just her hope. 
Like, that's one characteristic that has continued since season one, is how optimistic and how hopeful Supergirl is. Having hope in the humans and stuff like that. So I'm glad that that's something that has not people. varied at all. So I'm happy that they're sticking with that with Supergirl. But, yeah, I was with you with the whole relationship thing. So I'm like, I'm okay with it. But I think that this season just could have done without it, you know, almost. The, I would have been okay if they would have, like, you know, Alex, right? That and a little bit of Brainy. Brainy but and Nia. that kind of helped drove him, drive him back to become Brainy. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad that that one was there. I'm assuming that's what made him come back to being Brainy was Nia risking her life or something. Yeah. Because, like, whenever he went, I thought whenever he went to save her, there was going to be something with Nia that was going to bring him back, and it didn't then. And then the last time was, like, them bashing him in the face and stuff. Like, I guess taking a lot of damage, like, shorted him out, you know? So right. I was like, what brought him back this time? But I guess it's just her being in danger. Yeah, and he actually loves her, so yeah. it just brought him back, brought the feelings I'm to focusing the surface. on that, and then, like, I don't know, maybe coming back into next season with James's sister, which I don't even know her name, I forget. Kelly. Is it Kelly? Next season, having them kind of finish blossoming a relationship or something yeah. like that may have been... I think I would have liked that better, too. A little better. Because she, she showed up here in the last, I don't know, Yeah, five, it was like a side plot. <laughs> she, oh, by the way, this is going on, too. She showed up when Lex showed up, right? Because that's when James got shot. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. And all that. So, I mean, it's not been very many episodes. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it felt like, well, better make sure... What was the one in the causing episode or whatever? Better make sure Alex has a lot of screen time with Complete her. Complete random side plot. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think you could have done that and maybe it would have just, like, look, they have a relationship kind of going on. They have a friendship going at mm -hmm. least. And then next season we'd be like, now they've gone further into it or something. Yeah. But. Take it a little slower. But I understand that at least she told her story of, you know, losing her significant other and not being able to mourn her and that you know these feelings are finally developing yeah. again so they did not say that they are dating they did not say that they're in a relationship but they mutually like each other and they kissed that's all we have <laughs> they did they did kiss and i like that brainy's not going to be the villain next season yeah, I mean, I still think that that's something, now that they've done that, it's something they can come back to maybe like again. two seasons from now? I don't know. Maybe even partway through, maybe that could have been a trigger of like, hey, when this happened, we were able to sense you because you unlocked something that should have stayed like a tracker and Brainiac's after you. I don't know. I don't know where exactly Brainiac lies with all the stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, there are Brainiacs, but Brainiac, I think, Foss Clark, I think, is in this universe already. I think. You know what I mean? I'm trying to remember exactly because there's been mention of it, but I'm not 100 sure. Was it Ivo that created Brainiac? No. Ivo created the Red Tornado then. No. Ivo uh, creates uh, uh, the robot. They fought the robot in the crossover. That, mm -hmm. that thing, the one that can take all your powers and stuff. Brainiac is like an alien race, and he. Um, oh man or maybe he's not an alien race maybe he was creating Krypton there's something to do with Krypton he came over there he's a collector he's like a mm -hmm. he does all this stuff but he's not from Earth at all if anything he originated in Krypton or he's a completely different race but I, I can't remember more races of Brainiacs so I think it's him maybe as like some kind of like Kryptonian special extra thing I'm trying to remember because there's something about him in Smallville where like he came to Earth from S something from Kryptonian. I don't know. I don't remember exactly. I was trying to remember him from the cartoons. Like, which one he fell in. It's been a couple of years since I've seen. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we're going to jump over to Q&As and talk about what you guys caught, talked about, thought, asked, and we'll see what we have from you guys. Fatal Creation says, holy shit, Lex, I'll do it my way. They had that and another song that kind of surprised me that they had in here. The rock and roll song whenever they had everyone teamed off. The Lex and Supergirl and then Alex and Lockwood. Lockwood. and all that stuff, yeah. So. I don't remember what the song was, though. But, yeah. 
It was like perfectly Lex. <laughs> um, Red SM97 says, man, your boy Sam Whitworth we're trying to be Aaron and dodge that needle. Bet, <laughs> bet Aaron would have been better at dodging it. Yeah. What are some of the ways you or someone helps you when you need to deal with needles? No. Well, what? Melanie just films me and laughs, <laughs> so it's definitely not her. I hold your um, hand. I remember whenever I was in the hospital for my appendix um, back in what would have been like eighth grade or whatever it was, they had to do blood work every night, and my grandma, um, I think it was for my grandma, had given me like a stress ball. It was a brain because she had gotten it from the the cancer center or whatever. Yeah. So it was like it was like a squishy brain. So I would squeeze my brain. And focus on this arm while they were doing stuff with this arm. Because <laughs> I didn't want to think about it, so I would do that. But uh, I remember I got yelled at by this one nurse lady who was taking vials for a testing thing. And I kept moving my feet like this, trying to not think about it and focus on my feet. And she told me if I kept doing that, she wouldn't do it. So she didn't mean. Well, she just was not comfortable with drawing blood then. <laughs> Maybe. She's drawing out my left arm, too, which I hate. You always draw on my right. I don't want to talk about it. I'm done. Next question. Edwin B. says, I liked this season of Supergirl. I hope Lena doesn't turn, but it looks like she may. What do you guys think about Jimmy turning, especially with the eye patch? What do you think about Jimmy turning? Like, turning bad? With Lena? He has, why does he have an eye patch? I know. Did like he get stabbed thing? in the eye? No, with the that? way they were talking about it was like he got stabbed here, and, and it thought. said that like the thing shh, didn't screw up his eye. Hmm. Can he have like a robotic eye? I don't want Jimmy to be bad though. There's no way Jimmy's gonna go bad. No. No. I'd rather him like, I don't know, start an Avenger initiative. <laughs> a vigilante. <laughs> huh? Yeah. True. Just be the DC's Nick Fury. <laughs> True. Or take over what Arrow was trying to do with bringing all the vigilantes together since we're... Maybe. Um, but Lena going bad. Dang, I love her. Like, if she goes bad, she better get a redemption after that. Like, because <laughs> I'll lose it if they lose Lena. Like, I love that actress. Wherever she goes next, I'll follow her. <laughs> Jose said, Aaron, your boy Sam Whitworth's fights were terrible this episode. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of, like, big haymaker, overarching punches and stuff. I've usually said, too, that um, typically Supergirl fights aren't, like, the best fights. Well, I liked, and I give props to Sam Whitworth because they did not use a stunt double. Like, it was Sam. It looked like it was actually Sam the whole time. Versus Kara, she put on that suit so then she could have a double. So I like the fact that they still used that actor, and they tried to teach him some things. Hmm. But were they amazing? No. Haymakers, they don't really work unless you're, the other guys really well, jump too. <laughs> all of Supergirl is typically about power and superpowers and stuff like that. And then you go into more of like ideals and like person's interests, that kind of stuff. So whenever they're doing the choreography for everything, it's usually about like a big powerful punch or a laser eye or a blast or whatever. I still whatever, don't like so. the cheerleader punches though. We still got Supergirl cheerleader That's why punching. I'm saying and... Supergirl's never had great fight. I know. It's not Arrow. It's not, uh, it's not Arrow. Arrow. I was going to say Flash is CGI'd and then. Arrow has had some really good fights. Flash is usually very spectacle of, you know, the CGI and the mm -hmm. crazy stuff. I mean, the fighting is going to be not as good in Flash overall because it's just speed and yeah. running and weirdness. Um. But no, yeah, the uh, the best fighting in Air in the CW that they've had has been through Arrowverse, I think. And sadly, with that ending, I don't know. Maybe James Bamford will help. I don't know that Anything. woman. Ooh, I yeah, know. I can totally see that having I mean, good choreography. I mean, it's the closest thing to what Arrow would do. So I mean, I don't know what because, else. Because I do. mean, she doesn't have superpowers. She's just a woman. So that would be awesome. Hmm. Dobby says, what was your favorite part of the episode? For me, it was the Luther family reunion with poisoning and using aliens as batteries. It was perfectly Luther. <laughs> yes, Despite how little he was in the season, Lex is now among my favorite villains in the CW-verse. Oh, that's, yep. 
totally agree with that. Uh, John Cryer, is that his name? John Cryer, yeah. Did a fantastic job. I hate him so much. <laughs> I cannot watch him in anything anymore. He's so evil. But um, I, I agree with her. I really like that Lex, the Luther reunion there. Yeah. Um, favorite part of the episode? Probably John. Um, whenever he was grabbing the things and gonna use his psychic powers to overload the thing. Yeah. Um, just because I love, like, there was just emotion behind it. Like, it, Melanie, like, started crying, and I, like, I know I was like, oh, man, hello, John, it's so good. Like, I was choking up from him and stuff. So, that was definitely a very good moment for me. I don't know. I'm with them with the whole Lex reunion because while they were, like, zooming in on Lex and it was Lex giving his little speech about how wonderful family it, like, we always have blood to bring us back, blah, 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 he wiggles his ears. <laughs> like, John Cryer physically wiggles his ears, and I'm like, oh, my God. So that's why that scene totally won it for me. Okay. <laughs> Wiggling of the ears. But, no, John Cryer was freaking amazing. But Lena's freaking amazing. Lillian, I love Lillian. Dang. Uh, Magnus says, it looks like Supergirl and Legends have avoided the season four CW curse. This was a great season, and I'm glad they didn't make Lex president. Although it would fit our political climate, those are some of my least favorite stories from the comics. Well, yes, they did not do that. Um, no, I thought this season of Supergirl has been my favorite season of Supergirl yet. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it just has to do with how they did the villain. Um, yeah. It, it's the same thing I say about like Flash, is that, and although, the thing with Flash is like, the first three seasons has been like, oh, a speedster villain, a speedster villain, a speedster villain. We need to change it up and do some stuff different. Mm -hmm. And they have for the last couple seasons, but they haven't done well. <laughs> Whereas this one, Supergirl was like, oh, fighting some big, strong Kryptonian-like person. Fighting some big, right. strong Kryptonian-like person. And again, the fourth season, they're like, let's change it up and not fight a big, strong Kryptonian person, even though they had Red Daughter to fight against. So I wasn't sure where they were going to go with it. But they, they arced it in a way where... You still had to deal with Red Daughter and what's been going on over there, and <coughs> it's wrapped up most every plot through the season. Mm -hmm. And with introducing it, Lex, it, that's all it was. They introduced Lex, and they wrapped it all up, and it all made sense. Yeah. And they made a uh, they they made it important to have a Supergirl, but to also have Kara, which was good. Yeah. So it wasn't just that. You know, Supergirl solved the problems, but it's, you know, Supergirl solved it, Kara solved it, you know, Lena and John, like, everyone helped to combat this and solve everything. Yeah, which, I agree. I, this definitely has been my favorite season of Supergirl, but I don't know if it would count as its fourth season curse, you know, because this is its third season on the CW, so true, but there's could still be next season. They still build off of the first season, and everything that Supergirl had. So yeah, but definitely different feelings <laughs> with all the rest of the seasons, and I'm hoping that next season's just gonna be as good. Um, Edgar says, "What? What the hell is that? Lex, will he be in crisis to work with Thawne?" Oh my gosh. Imagine Thon and Lex Luthor and. Uh, Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Like they make like a little like League of Villains and stuff. Mm -hmm. I hope they do that for Crisis because I would love to have Grodd, uh, Lex. Oh dang uh, it, they just. Reverse Flash. Him, never mind. Huh? I was thinking Mr. Freeze. They could. Because um, they have Batwoman coming in. I don't know what mm -hmm. they're going to do there. Oh, true. There, a lot of the bat villains can be there. Oh my god. Well, the thing too with it being, with it being crisis, they could also just bring in villains from other Earths. True. You know, so we have Reverse Flash from this Earth. We have Lex Luthor from this Earth. Maybe we have a Joker from this Earth, oh or whatever. Gosh. You know what I mean? Like we have all these villains that you're not going to see in the Arrowverse any other time, but we're going to have them for right now. And then they go, and then they're gone once it's done. Bring, bring in Gotham actors. Yes. Gotham's over, right? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what their contract legalities and stuff would be, but maybe they wouldn't mind having, like, a, hey, we're going to do this big crossover thing, and then maybe bring that in, and people are like, oh, wow, i got to watch Gotham. Ah! Be awesome! 
Imperial Rebel says Leviathan is an organization apparently with relations to the League of Assassins. There's more to it, but it may be spoilery. Well, thank you, Imperial Rebel, for not telling us everything about Leviathan, because I don't know anything about him. And League of Assassins is that story. Primarily. Well, originally, right? Yeah. Logan Britton says this episode, the Flash and Arrow finales, all make me think that the first half of every show, except for maybe Black Lightning, for next season will be setting up Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm-hmm. Do you think this will be the case? Um, I definitely think Arrow will have a big focus on Crisis, especially with it being the, the final season and the ending around Crisis. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the last that we saw of Oliver and Arrow, hopefully you guys have watched Arrow. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert! The last we saw of Oliver was him leaving with Monitor. So to pick up from where that left off to know what's going on, I think that we're going to follow Oliver and see what Monitor has in store, what he needs him to do, you know, etc. Yeah. Um, And then maybe we wrap up at the end of it with where Arrow left off of Felicity going through that portally thingy. Yes, I would love that. And seeing them see each other again after like 30 years. Um, But I think Flash will have setups also, but not as, like, it will be, like, the side plot flashing. Yeah, because Monitor hasn't inter- interfered there. It just set up that, hey, this thing's going to be earlier. But the, the newspaper in Flash, spoilers, changed, mm-hmm. but no one saw it. And I can't imagine a reason of why someone's just going to go in there and be like, why are those newspapers different? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But if they'd have done it whenever, like, they were watching the video of Nora Mm -hmm. and then if that would have ended and then like getting had been like "Eh, flux detected and it would and then like it had Iris and Barry being like what and like staring at it like I think that would have been a way of being like what what is going on and then the next season is coming back and we gotta figure out what's going on with -hmm. with this you know and now they're actively trying to figure it out versus now it's like well how is it gonna play in and pull into that and also what effect did that did Oliver changed that? Did Nora change that? Did Thawne change that? Like, I blame Nora still. You know, like Thawne not dying and getting away, being released somewhere, is that what's upping the crisis timeline? Or is it something else? Um, but definitely Supergirl is going to be, you know, first part arc with this other green Martian. And that's going to lead into our crisis, so it will be directly affected by yeah. the crisis. Jack says, so Monitor can bring people back from the dead. Maybe they could bring back Malcolm Merlin next season of Arrow, <gasps> since it's the final season. Also, how long do you think Kara won't know Lena knows the truth? I don't know. Probably a little while. Hopefully she just tells her soon. But no, I love the idea of bringing back Malcolm. Uh, honestly, with the Crisis of Infinite Earths, you could bring back anybody, really. Right. Um, and especially with it being, like, yeah, an Arrow. Oh, well, during the last, last uh, crossover, they had Malcolm, right? They yeah, had Malcolm um, and uh, Eobard. Yeah. It was uh, Scarecrow, like, stuff, like, messing with them and stuff. But, yeah. But they weren't back. It was just them hallucinating. So. Yeah. Logan says, I can't be the only one who thought, oh, my God, it's Nick Fury when James showed up. <laughs> I, I suppose you were not. I think there's been other people that were saying it, too. You were the one that was saying it. You were like, he can be the Nick Fury in a symbol. A league of... Well, you didn't see say league, but... No. Bubbles says, do you think emotionless Brainy will be back? He, I feel it kind of ended too soon. I don't think next season, well, except for towards the end, to set us up for the season after that. So, season six, that'd be cool. Because he did such a good job. It's definitely interesting and fun, and I think it's it's something we can see back, or we can see maybe something happening because of it or something. Yeah. Bubbles also said, I honestly thought the Monitor was going to bring Oliver to Supergirl's Earth at first. Is Mm. that the same Monitor from Earth 1? Or is it a different one from Supergirl's Earth? P.S. Love you, Aaron and Melanie, and a little hard face. Aww, okay. Thank you, Bubbles. Um, I don't know. There's some people who are speculating that maybe it could be an anti-monitor, and that monitor and anti-monitor both look the same. 
being like two sides of a coin. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be a possibility. We Maybe, should compare their costumes. Yeah, once we see him. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is just Monitor and he's setting into motion an idea of how to stop what's going on. I mean, he obviously knows things that other people don't know. Right. So, I don't know. Curiosity Kit- Kitty says, what do you think is the last place Monitor has to go? And she said Monitor is in Monitor. Uh, could it be Legends? Could it be Gotham? If Melanie has seen the first look trailer, what does she think of the Batwoman show? So, number one is that monitor. Um, number two, he said, I have one more place to go. And then it cut away and it cut back to him with Lex Luthor. So, could the Lex Luthor have been the last place to go? Or is there another place? And we haven't seen the finale of Legends yet. So, right. it could be a nod towards having to stop off for Legends. That would make sense with it being the last CW because show. Because they've also seemed so far away from everything else that's going on all the mm-hmm. time, it'd be good to have something happen to make sure it brings them back in. Because they weren't even in the last crossover. You know? Yeah, that's right. They were busy crossing over with themselves. Yeah. What was going on? They had like the... The Nora stuff? Uh, no, they had the uh, the sirens of s- synchronicity and they had the the custodians of chronolo- chronology. Oh yeah, that's right. They had sis and they had cock and they had puppets. And... <laughs> yes, yes, I I remember now. It was a fun no, episode. Sauce. SOS, that's what it was. <laughs> SOS and COC. Um, so I don't know, Kitty. Uh, Melanie, have you seen the trailer for Batwoman? And what do you think of Batwoman? I'm super excited for Batwoman. Um, I'm glad that they're introducing another non super powered. Um, protagonist you know a hero so it's going to be exciting especially since i'm such a huge gotham fan that i'm hoping that they'll you know stick true with like batman storylines or something and bring in some of the villains and be definitely the same universe the thing you gotta be careful with is like you know arrow has already taken a lot of yeah batman storylines yeah so you also want to you know, this is a universe that Batman has lived in and already done things. So you also want to have had stories Batman has done, like how you had Superman. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously there's a history between Lex and Superman here. Um, so we want to also have a history of Batman, but then Batwoman needs to also be able to feel like she's in a universe that is has Batman, that has these other heroes, but also is of her own in some way. Mm-hmm. So, But not only Arrow taking them, but so hasn't Supergirl taken several of the Batman like villains and ideas. So Yeah, but that doesn't matter because it's a different it's universe. Another, it's another Earth. Yeah, right but now. you don't want to see the same story. Oh, didn't we just deal with them? Oh, yeah, that's on another Earth. Well, what, Whatever. what are you referring to that they've done? Like the Toy Maker and the... Um, uh, not the Daxamites, but it was in, it was a couple just sideline storylines that were Batman related. Uh, I mean, Toymaker fit in really well because of Wynn and everything, but okay. But anyway, I'm going to be excited to see how this plays out because, I mean, they're doing such a good job with Supergirl taking over, you know, like a show that should have been developed for Superman. You know, like all the storylines and everything, that there's been more lore with Superman, but now we're putting Supergirl here, and it's her show. So I'm hoping that Batwoman will fill the same shoes and just be epic, and just bring this huge light. <laughs> I'm I'm excited, especially since I looked into Ruby Rose and saw that she had some uh, like boxing history. So I'm really hoping that shows. So good choreography, good hand-to-hand combat, like actual jujitsu. Hope that they train them on Aikido and a ju- jujitsu. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, Lover Sashimi says, if you were a villain or a supervillain, what song would you want to sing along to as you execute your master oh plan? Gosh. That was perfect for Lex. I did it my yeah. way. No, no one cares about Lex. What about you? I know. What song would you use? I don't know. What, what song would you use? Who put the keys on the table? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, Inner Sandman. That'd be fun. Boom. <laughs> Say your prayer and over. That'd be fun. <laughs> You're shooting things. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't. You're like a Reba McIntyre song. <laughs> Why haven't I heard from you? It's stuck like glue. You probably pick some kind. Country doesn't work. You can't. No, do it doesn't. You can't do country in those kind of moments. <laughs> well, I mean, usually you can't do classic, classical, or whatever you consider that. Wasn't that Frank Sinatra or Michael Bublé? It's not Michael Bublé. I know that. I don't know who sings it otherwise. Who was the other person you mentioned? Frank Sinatra. Yeah, Frank Sinatra. I faced it all. Because I thought it was older than Michael Bublé. Yeah. You said Michael Bublé. I'm like, no, it's not Michael Bublé. I didn't. But but I didn't. Yeah. So Frank Sinatra. Do you have no song? Nothing? I don't have a song. No. Henry Higgins, nothing? (laughs) Henry Higgins, nothing. What? Henry Higgins. Henry Higgins, just you white. Henry Higgins, just you white. I'm trying to make songs that you... Um. <laughs> oh no! Probably Eminem. Isn't it Eminem that does that monster song? As you're a monster stuck inside of my head, talking the voices. Done. Yeah, it's a monster. It's a mix of uh, voices. It's Eminem and um, who is it? Rihanna. <laughs> no. Um. It's Eminem. He does, it's Eminem is someone else. It's a girl, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is Rihanna. Oh, wow. I'm friends with the monster that's under my bed, get along with the voice inside of my head, and trying to save me, stop holding your breath. You think I'm crazy? Yeah, you think I'm crazy. So that's the song you're going to sing? You think I'm crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with that monster. All right. Well, that's Melanie's because she's crazy. Well, that I mean, was always my running crazy. song. That was the song that would get me going. All right. Dip says, uh, your boy... Is becoming your worst nightmare, Aaron. Losing hair, big ass needles into his heart. Who did you like as a villain more, Lex Luthor or Ben Lockwood? Oh man, um, that's tough. John Cryer did a great job. I, if you'd have told me Sam Witwer was gonna come in here and be a villain, I'd have been like, awesome. That's gonna be great. I'm excited. If you just told me John Cryer is gonna come in here and be Lex Luthor. I've been like, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Two and a half men guy, <laughs> that guy, little scrawny guy. But no, like they both did a really good job. And John Cryer only had, like, three episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still really enjoyed the Ben Lockwood, like, backstory episode a lot. Yeah. Um, so I love having characters that you can understand where they're coming from, even if you can't or don't, like, sympathize with them. You at least have an understanding. So it's not just like, oh, well, they're just bad to be bad. You know, they're not like Steppenwolf from Justice League. They're <laughs> like... There's more behind them, and I like that. So, I don't know. I'd probably go with, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably go with uh, Ben Lockwood, because I had more time with him to actually be able to see what he's going to do. While uh, John Cryer, though, also surprised me a lot, though. I think he did a really good job. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Oh, they were asking you, because they knew that you'd be biased. And I'm asking you! <laughs> um, I think John Cryer definitely had the advantage because we had Lex, he's taking, you know, Lex's part that has lots of history. So he knew how to play this character. He knew how to play this role, which made him fantastic. The whole, Mr. Smoker! And everything, he did fantastic. Uh, Sam Witwer did amazing creating this role and developing the character, how he wanted it to be played out. Um, So in that aspect, or, acting and creativity would definitely be Sam. But pure enjoyment would have been John Cryer. Because <laughs> I don't like giving winners. I don't give trophies. Trophies. <laughs> Unless you're on the soccer team. <laughs> um, Everybody gets a trophy. Caramel says, do you think that when Supergirl and Red Daughter merge back together that Supergirl got any of Red Daughter's enhancements, or did they disintegrate along with Red Daughter? Well, we saw the one. So, like, well, next season, will we see Supergirl doing a lightning punch or something? Oh, yeah, with the big plasma bang or whatever. Her it eyes is. were like purple. They were purple. They were purple. Wasn't that blue? Nope. Oh. I changed it. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, know how long it will last if it was just for that short period just to take down Lex. Maybe. See, hmm. 
it'd be interesting to see that because then the thing I was going to say is it'd been neat if uh, previously whenever Supergirl and Superman fought like Supergirl beat him but I think it would be interesting to be able to have like that power scaling idea so like say Superman beat Supergirl now that we had this you can see that she you know her strength difference to Superman now maybe has increased much more after mm -hmm. having this incident happening but I don't know what we would have to compare to be able to see that Supergirl has gotten stronger, except for just showing, like, well, here's some new powers she has. But then okay. you're also adding in new powers that maybe aren't necessarily in the comic lore, or maybe they are. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it's kind of fun if they do have her develop these new powers, mm -hmm. because before, what was it, last season with the Legion? Uh, the Justice League, or not Justice League, the ring? Yep, I got you. Continue. Anyway, <laughs> well, I was asking you what the name of them was. They were the Legion superheroes, right? Legion? Okay, it just sounded weird. Anyway, with them, it was nice to see them come back, and then they taught Kara how to do cake, cake tricks. tricks. So if they keep developing the superhero, and she keeps developing new tricks of mm -hmm. the trade, it's going to make it more fun to watch her, especially in fights coming up. Since they don't do a lot of hand-to-hand. -hand. That's why I think I would have loved, uh, I think it was season two when they had Superman and Supergirl fight. I think I would have loved Supergirl to have lost, especially given that Superman's had all this more experience and everything that's going mm -hmm. on. And then as this goes on, you can have it come back again, and you can see all these things she's been learning and the experience she's been gaining, and that, you know, Clark hasn't done that now. He's been on Argo, he's been doing other things. You see that, he had, that she has surpassed him now, mm -hmm. versus like, they kind of were like, hey, look, she's here now. She had a season. She's better. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's true. Hmm. Like, we didn't really... I, I feel like there I want to feel the growth, you know, of yeah. our character that we've been on versus, like, she's just better. Well, he was uh, brainwashed. Not brainwashed, but hypnotized or... Yeah, he had been... Uh, yeah. He, they mind controlled. Him. He was mind controlled. So maybe he was not fighting to his best ability. Maybe. But you know what I mean, though? I like the idea of being able to see Yeah, I think you'd have a social outrage, though. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Just to complain. To complain. <laughs> no, I mean, everyone complains about complaining. But alrighty, guys. I think that's it for our Q&As. Thank you guys so much for entering in Q&As during Supergirl. We will have one more episode of Legends this week, so make sure you guys, if you watch that, put in your Q&A so that we can talk about those. Um, but before we leave, we will have a poll, a poll for the end of this that hopefully we'll remember to talk about at the beginning of next season of Supergirl. Aye. Which uh, I think the logical question at this point is, will Lena be a villain next season? Dang. Dang, why do you have to ask that one? I think it's one that like we can see, like, okay, will she come to an understanding with Kara? You know, we saw her break the glass. We see Kara kind of combating, telling Lena. So, like, next season, um, sure, maybe she'll have some anger or something like that, and there'll be some drama between them. But will it go further than that, and would, will she actually become a villain to our Supergirl? Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it kind of similarly happen to uh, Smallville, Clark Kent, and Lex Luthor, where they're friends. And then this secret that Clark keeps from him keeps dividing them and putting a yeah. wedge between them until Lex is ultimately becoming a bad guy. Is that what is going to happen here with Lena? Or, well, maybe things get resolved and people will be happy. Yeah, I can definitely see tensions escalating to where she will not be part of the first act, you know, before the crisis. So we spend time on the crisis time of watching her get angry and keeping this wedge between where she's and not being the secrets. And then after the crisis. And then something snaps afterwards or whatever. Yeah. I mean, even still. Like losing Jimmy. Oh, here's the thing, too, that could happen. Once the crisis occurs and is done and it has been solved, anything I feel like could be different afterwards. That's true. You know what I mean? It could change. Yeah. I mean, Lena could be bald with a beard. <laughs> Be just like Lex. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, but anyway, guys, Melanie says that she thinks Lena's gonna be bad because she hates her. So, uh, we wanna know what you think. So, make sure you guys let us know over at patreon.com slash blindwave. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave in the comments here at YouTube. Uh, me and Melanie are out of Supergirl now. We still have Supernatural, but maybe there's something else we should do. So, let us know down in the comments if there's something else we should be checking out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, you can subscribe there. There's Patreon there. There's descriptions down there, and the comments are down there. So leave a comment, let us know if there's something else we haven't watched that we should fill in for this summer schedule. Um, stay tuned for Supernatural. Stay tuned for Legends coming. 
And uh, that's it. We'll see you guys yeah. next next year. For like, Supergirl. subscribe. Ha!